Most baseball fans know that the direction of hitting is trending towards a favoritism in high slugging numbers and isolated power numbers. A perfect example is this year's playoffs. Through the 36 games of the playoffs, home runs have been hit in 26 of those games. The team that hit more home runs in that span has a 25-1 record. So it's proven at this point that hitting the ball in the air with high launch angles is the future of hitting in MLB, which means a certain brand of hitter may be getting left in the dust. Let me explain. I don't know about you guys, but one of my original original favorite players to watch in baseball was Luis Castillo. No, not the pitcher, the guy that dropped the ball. Yeah, that guy. And definitely not his time as a New York Met, because that was painful all around. But when Luis Castillo was younger and right, he was an exciting player to watch. He was speedy, scrappy, and sure-handed with his glove at second base. Outside of that low light at Yankee Stadium, which he's most remembered for, Castillo put together a 15-year career and played in over 1,700 games, winning a World Series ring in 2003 along the way. His skill set was very welcome in the game back then. High batting averages, plenty of stolen bases, and solid defense. What's interesting is that Castillo had an OPS plus above the league average of 100 just three times in his 15 year career. He didn't hit for extra bases or power, and no one cared. If you dropped Luis Castillo in modern MLB though, I think his career lasts maybe five years. The game has moved past the Luis Castillo style players, yet we forget that these high contact speedsters are really fun players to watch, even if their stats are unimpressive. Today's video is not about Luis Castillo, but it's instead about one of his brethren in the modern game who may be running out of chances at the major league level. A high contact speedster with a fun glove in the field. I call him my favorite bad hitter in baseball, and his name is Rymel Tapia. Tapia made baseball headlines in the 2021 season for some of his highlight reel plays in the outfield, as well as his 18-game hitting streak in the middle of June, where he batted 438 with 14 doubles over the span of three weeks. He's one of the most recognizable faces on an otherwise forgettable 2021 Rockies team. But Tapia's 2021 numbers were not impressive, to put it blankly. A 273 batting average, 26 doubles, and 20 stolen bases will please the traditional fans' eyes, and his first half numbers far exceed his paltry stats in the second half. But his 80 OPS plus and 372 slugging percentage leave a lot to be desired. This comes especially disappointing considering his home turf is Coors Field, a field notorious for absurd park factors that assist hitters. The key in that being high elevation and lots of home runs. So Tapia is a below average hitter with average defensive statistics playing for a team that consistently fails to meet expectations and he seems to be getting worse by the year. So why in the world should we care about him? Well, there's an underlying reason to all of Tapia's recent struggles. His approach approach to hitting makes zero sense for where the game is at right now. Let's dive in. A term you probably hear thrown around a lot in modern MLB is launch angle. The angle at which the hitter squares up the ball and hits it. A decent launch angle is in the 9 to 15 degree range. That's about where you want to be in the modern game. Rymel Tapia somehow had a negative 4.4 average launch angle in 2021. This means that on average for every at bat, Tapia was hitting the ball directly into the ground. No one even sniffs his average launch angle range as he's a full 5.6 degrees lower than second place Nicky Lopez, who was at an abysmal 2.8 degrees. For reference, we can take Atlanta Brave Adam Duvall, who managed a dismal 281 on base Base percentage, but he had the highest launch angle in MLB at 23.6 degrees. So it helped offset his poor on base percentage by clubbing 38 home runs. With that absurdly high slugging percentage and absurdly low OBP, his OPS plus was just 102. But you wouldn't guess that by the amount of home runs and RBIs that he had. And this is because of his launch angle. If we go back to when the stat was first recorded in 2015, there are only three qualified players to have an average launch angle of zero or below. Christian Yelich's launch angle in 2015 was zero degrees, Wilson Ramos in 2019 was negative 0.1, and the most egregious of the bunch was Eric Hosmer in 2018 with a negative 1.5 degree launch angle. However, with Christian Yelich, we've seen him have monster MVP caliber seasons because of higher launch angles, among other things. So back to Tapia. Because of this really poor launch angle, this of course led him to have a staggeringly high ground ball rate of 67.4%, over two thirds of all of his batted balls. And once again, this was tops in MOB by a large margin over Eric Hosmer, who had a 55.5% ground ball rate. This left Tapia with the highest qualified single season ground ball rate per Fangraph's batted ball metrics since 2002. Among this class are noted small ball hitters and speedsters like Ben Revere, Derek Jeter, 
Ichiro Suzuki, and hey, look at that, Luis Castillo three times. I guess now you know why I brought him up at the beginning. In 133 games played, Raimel Tapia only had 17 games where he didn't put the ball on the ground, compared to 39 where he only put the ball on the ground when he put it in play. Let's dive in a little deeper. There were only 46 games this year where Tapia kept the ball off the ground more than half of his at-bats, compared to the whopping 87 games where he put the ball in the dirt more than half of the times he put the ball in play. What's odd about this all is that this hasn't always been the case for Raimel Tapia. At one point when he was in the bigs in 2018, his average launch angle was 18.1 degrees, which would have been ranked 12th in the league among qualified hitters if he reached the at-bat threshold. This came after averaging a 13.5 launch degree angle in 2016 and 2017. But since this 2018 peak, Tapia's launch angle has dropped by an average rate of 7.5 degrees with each passing season, 18.1 to 7.5 to 1.8 to now negative 4.5. Four. Launch angle isn't everything, however, and most fans know this, and I want to assure my viewers of this as well. Just because you're squaring up the ball and hitting it in the air every time, it doesn't mean you'll automatically become a 30 home run hitter by default. The exit velocity needs to be there, as well as the ability to make consistent contact in the first place. But the thing is, Tapia has both of these skills as well, which makes his situation all the more frustrating. First, let's address his contact. Raimel Tapia sports a 78.7 out of zone contact percentage in 2021, which is seventh in MLB and above the class of elite contact hitters like Jose Altuve and Jose Ramirez. There's a similar story with his in-zone contact percentage of 92.7%, which is 12th in MLB, tied with Nolan Arenado, and just behind the likes of Mookie Betts and Michael Brantley. Tapia's blade discipline wasn't fantastic, with his 6.8 walk percentage being in the bottom 30 of the league. However, you would think that this would make him a high strikeout candidate, but that isn't the case either. He has a 16.0 strikeout percentage from 2021, which ranks in the top 40 of the league. This means that Tapia is free swinging, but he's pretty good at it. Whenever he squares up to hit the ball, he usually makes contact. I also mentioned exit velocity before, and more importantly than his high contact ratings, Raimel Tapia hit just six home runs this year. But here's the thing. Let's look at the pitchers that gave them up. Ah, uh, you know, regular Joe Schmoes, replacement level pitchers. You know, guys like Jacob deGrom, Walker Bueller, Max Scherzer? I mean, those are the gimmies that any major league hitter should get. Joking aside, when Tapia managed to hit the balls over the fence, he made sure they went far every time. The average distance of 414 feet on his six home runs was ninth in the MLB, tying himself with Miguel Sano, Rafael Devers, and Giancarlo Stanton. Four names that I don't think you'd ever see in the same class of power rankings. Was Tapia's approach different against the aces of MLB? Maybe, or maybe he just got lucky, but the stat is eye-opening nonetheless. So we now know that when Tapia hits the ball in the air, he has much more success, he just doesn't do it that often. To demonstrate the difference in Raimel Tapia's game based on how he hits the ball, I found this great tweet from at Saberskeptic on Twitter. Per September 23rd, basically the end of the 2021 season, Raimel's weighted runs created plus by type of hit in 2021 is staggering, to say the least. When he hit ground balls, his weighted runs created plus was 29, on fly balls it was 89, and on line drives, it was 308. If Raimel Tapia hits line drives at the same rate he hits ground balls, he becomes maybe one of the best hitters in MLB. But his ground ball percentage of 67.4% means that two-thirds of the time he makes contact, his weighted runs created plus is 29, which is abysmal, especially for an everyday player. His season's weighted run created plus total dragged all the way up to 76 just on account of the insane capability he has when hitting the ball on a line. All he needs to do is hit the ball in the air and look what happens. Now, changing an approach to hitting and altering launch angle in the middle of the season is extremely hard, so I understand why Tapia wasn't able to make the fix in the middle of the season. But this is a big offseason for him. The Rockies are sort of in limbo right now and could be moving towards a younger core, which means that while Tapia will probably get at-bats in 2022, there's no guarantee he'll be a major league mainstay for that much longer. Tapia is unfortunately in the wrong state of baseball for his type of production, and he might soon be replaced because of it. The difference here is that Tapia has the capability to be a much better hitter than he already is with a few tweaks and a guy like Luis Castillo, who we mentioned before, could never be that type of player. Tapia's output is one-dimensional, but his potential is far from it. It's a conflicting feeling for me as a viewer because I really do enjoy the Luis Castillos of the game, but I know that they're few and far between nowadays. And for good reason. The game has evolved past them. I'm not saying that making tons of contact automatically makes you a good hitter because discipline goes a long way in the modern state of baseball. But as we've shown with all these stats, Tapia has the capability to be a well-rounded major league hitter if he can straighten himself out. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that I love to watch guys 
guys like Rymel Tapia play baseball. Because in addition to his base stealing prowess and his fun defense, he puts the ball in play pretty much every time he steps into the box. And balls in play are fun to watch in baseball. I don't think we'll ever get to the three outcome sport that some people have envisioned in baseball in terms of home runs, strikeouts, and walks. But it's no secret that players like Rymel Tapia are few and far between in the modern game. But I'm willing to let go of my love for that scrappy style of play if it means that Rymel Tapia can finally reach his potential as a big league outfielder, and more importantly, a big league slugger. He has work to do this offseason, so let's check back in in 2022 and hope that he becomes a better player. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video, and a special thanks to Dugout Mugs for sponsoring this video. If you guys missed it last time, Dugout Mugs sent me this amazing custom made olive mug, which I've really been enjoying using and just kind of looking at because it's just a beautiful piece right here. For those who don't know, this company has created special mugs out of baseball bats, and it's not only limited to wooden bats, they do metal bats now too, and they have a ton of cool things to offer to all baseball fans on their website. They've been giving away free products all playoffs long, and if you still want to get in on the action, all you have to do is fill Film yourself drinking from any Dugout Mug product, post it, and tag them on social media to be entered to win. But if you don't have anything from Dugout Mugs, they're giving you a great discount to buy something now so you can enter the giveaway as well. If you're feeling inspired from my video, maybe you go buy yourself a Rockies Dugout Mug. They're letting you get a knob shot glass for free at dugoutmugs.com jolly. Just pay $8.95 in shipping and handling. They have an awesome collection of products from mugs, wine glasses, bottle openers, and shot glasses all made from baseball bats, which is the perfect gift for the holidays. They're going to be riding with me and John Boy Media for the entire playoffs and on, so make sure to get in on the fun and support our friends over at Dugout Mugs. If you use the code JOLLY on their website, you get 30% off site-wide. Thanks for watching today's video.